All right, in this video, we're going to be tackling steps number 11 through 20 in the free CodeCamp Build a Hotel feedback form. All right, so if you're new to this channel, my name's Rob, I'm with PreCodeCamp, and I'm a coding instructor teaching people how to become web developers. And so we have these series going on with free CodeCamp's materials since they're out there, they're free. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go through it step by step and explain some of these steps to you. So yes, you're gonna get the solution, but you're also going to get some more information about why are we using this element? What does this element do? And so it's a real good opportunity if you are learning to become a web developer to watch this video and go through it in its entirety. However, we do have everything chaptered out down below based upon what step you actually need help out with. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We are on step number 11 here with Free Code Camp's Build a Hotel feedback form. And it says, before you proceed with this step, make sure that you smash the like button as it helps the algorithm. So let's make sure we do that. And then let's go ahead and go forward with this. All right. So it says that the name attribute is used to identify the form data after it has been submitted to the server. So we want to add a name attribute to this. Now, here's the thing with this example here, we're not going to actually physically see this on the screen. And it's really meant for when we hit that submit button, it's collecting all the data from the entire form and it's going to put it into a nice object. And I know that we don't know objects yet if you're going through the HTML course, but just know that by doing this, we're able to grab form data later on when we are building out the forms and maybe we want to put some of that form data into a database. So it's just preparing you for that. And so everything inside of a form should have a name. And in this case here, it wants us to put the word name. And I know that's a funny thing to say, name equals name. And maybe if I was in charge of creating this to make sure that, hey, we can actually put anything in here. We're gonna do more examples, but maybe I would put in here full name, for example. But anyways, it's what they want. And that's what we're going to do. We're gonna hit the check code button and then we're going to move on to the next step here. Step number 12, it says that in the previous lecture videos, you learned how to work with placeholders as well as the required attributes for something like this. And it does give you an example. And in mine, I'm gonna to have to scroll over to the right to see everything else. But one thing to take note of is we have this placeholder here. And so that's an attribute. That is something that we can go ahead and add right now. I'm going to go ahead and copy this part here. And I want you to take a look at the name input that we have right here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it and notice that behind the scenes it's grayed out on here, you're going to see the text that you put in here. Again, placeholder text is there to help the user explain what you are expecting in here. And when we just have that keyword of name or that label of name, we really don't know what we want to put in there. Is it first name, last name? Is it a middle name as well? But when we provide placeholder text, you're helping that user out and determining what actually needs to go in there. Now, this next part here, it says required. And notice that there's no equal sign associated with it, right? We just need to put it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And again, it doesn't matter as far as the order, wherever it goes, it will behave the same whether or not I put it right here or if I put it right before the type, it's taking every single attribute and it's going to apply it. So order does not matter. Now, what does the required part do for us? So to refresh our memory based off of free code camps lectures, it is going to be a front end safeguard. So when we hit that submit button, it's going to look at each one of these input fields and if it is left blank, the submit is not going to happen, okay? And we'll probably show you this later on once we get a button on here, but just know that it's going to look all over the form and it's going to check to see, all right, is this one required? Yes or no? And if it is, it's going to make sure that it's not blank. So it's a front end safeguard. Let's go and check our code. Congratulations. We're ready to move on to the next. Lesson. Step number 13 in building a hotel feedback form for Free Code Camp. It says, now that you have a couple steps that you've watched in this video, make sure that you're subscribed to the Free Code Camp video. All right. This will go ahead and accelerate your learning. Totally agree with that. Now, your hotel feedback form, it should 
be able to collect an email address for the user. So start by adding a label element with the text of email required, and then make sure that you have a for attribute and label that as email. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a label here, and then I'm going to close the tag on it and make sure that I do have that closing attribute on there. All right, next is let's go ahead and add the four and we want to set that to email. And then in between the label, that's where we're going to add this exact text to include the colon that they give us. And there we go. We see that we do in fact have a label on here. All right, let's go ahead and check this code. See if it is good. There we go. Let's move on to our next step. Step number 14, it's saying, let's add an input element, make it the type of email. And then also it says on here that the input should have an ID set to email. The name attribute should also be email and it needs to be required. And then let's have a placeholder of example at email.com. So a lot of things going on in this. Let's just tackle things one at a time and just refresh our memories on what things do what. We're gonna go ahead and create an input, okay? Again, inputs are void elements. It does not require a closing tag. Next on here, it says, let's go ahead and make the type an email. Now, what does this do for us when we're adding this type of element? Behind the scenes, when we hit that submit button, it's going to check to see if it is a valid email. And it's not going to check if the email actually exists. It's just going to look for the key factors of, is there an at sign? Do we see like a .com, right? Is it formatted as if it would be possible to send the email? Has no effect whatsoever on, is it a valid email as far as, hey, does this email actually exist? Now that's what the type does. Next on here, it says that we need to have an ID of email. And this is for targeting CSS, but it's really also used for here with that for, right? Remember that we're trying to associate the label with this over here, right? With the input field that it belongs to. Next on here, it says that we want the name. We wanna set that to email as well. And the name is going to help us out when we do a form submit. And now we have access to the form data that we collect. So think of it almost as an Excel spreadsheet. Once we get the form data and it's going to say, oh, name is this, email is this. And it's just mapping that data out for us. Next on here, it says that we want to make this thing required. And then the last thing here is the placeholder. And we want to set that exactly as it displayed right here. So let me make sure I grab it and paste it. Okay, let's see if that looks good. Yep, example at email.com. Let's go ahead and check our code, see if we got everything that we needed. Perfect, let's move on to step number 15. All right, step number 15 in building a hotel feedback form for free code camp. It tells us that the input element has a size attribute. So this is an attribute that we haven't seen quite yet. And this will basically show us as a user, how many are gonna be visible while we are typing. Obviously it needs to be non-negative and that you can set it to anything that is positive. And I do want to bring this up as well. So in W3 Schools, it says the following, that the size attribute specifies the visible width in characters, the input field. Again, I'm gonna demo this here for you, but it says that the size attribute works with the following type. So that's something interesting to note as we are going through the different types of input fields, the size only applies to these. And then the other thing is because W3 schools identifies that, hey, you might be trying to limit the size of the characters. In that case, you want to utilize max length to say, hey, I want no more than 20 characters to be used in this input field. If I get any more, I don't want the user to type in any more than that. So that's where max length would come into play. All right, back to our problem here. And so it wants us to do this on both the input fields, both the name and the email. 
And again, order does not matter whatsoever. I can put it here. So I can do size equals with the quotes. If I just type the number two, notice that my box here shrunk and really only two of them are fully visible, right? So if I type in one, two, and I type the three, it gets scrunched. So really visibly only two of them are being shown right now, but it wants 20 in here. So let's do 20 for the email. And then it also wants 20 for the name as well. And again, it can go anywhere. I can put that up here, size equals 20 and does the same exact thing. So let's go and check our code here and we have passed. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So step number 16, again, we're just doing a little bit of rinse and repeat, a pattern that we're going to be seeing in this. Let's go ahead and add the label. So we're gonna do, again, open and close tags, and then we'll worry about what goes in here. It says the text needs to be the following, age with the parentheses optional. And then as far as the for attribute, that needs to be age. So I'm just going to do four and then age, and that should work for us. Let's go and check our code. There we go. Moving on to the next step. Step number 17, the number input is used to create a numeric input field. And it provides us with an example here. And once we place this code on our page, we're going to notice that we're going to have up and down arrows on the input field, a little inker dinkers, I'd like to call it. But it does tell us on here that we can utilize a minimum and maximum at attribute or min max, and that will set the lowest point that the value could be as well as the maximum value that it could be. So below the label element, go ahead and make an input field with the type set to number. And then we want to have the ID set to age. And let's look at this example here because I think it's given us the solution minus the part of the minimum max. And then the name should be age. And so the name is age up here. And then the minimum, we want that to be three and then the max be 100. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this entire input field. And I know I didn't copy the start of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so now we have a number, we have the ID, we have the age, the minimum, we need to change that to three. And then you see these arrows. That's what I was talking about, the inker dinker, where we can go up. But notice like when I started hitting the up arrow, it automatically jumped to three. And I can't go any lower than it. However, I am able to type something lower than three. But when we go and submit it, we're putting in front end safeguards again, because we're saying, hey, if someone tries to submit this with a value less than zero or less than three, then let's go ahead and kick it back and reject that. So anyways, let's check our code. There we go. Congratulations. Let's move on to our next step. All right. Step number 18. It says in this section, we're going to ask the user if they had stayed in the hotel before. So start by adding a field set and inside the field set, add a legend and then have that legend text display. Was this your first time at our hotel? So some things that we need to start thinking about as we're going through these steps is what does this visually look like in my head, right? Or how is this going to look on the page? And so anytime I see the element field set, I know that means, hey, we're going to be getting a crazy border that we see here, light gray border. And then with the legend, what does that do? Oh, we used that before. Let's see what that does. I come up here and I look for the legend personal information. And then I'm looking over here. It put it in the rectangular box and made it like a group. So those are some of the things that you need to start thinking about. And again, this is what we are building out right here, which is this part that we see here. It's not about the inside quite yet. It's just the exterior of this form. So let's go ahead and do that so we can complete this step. So it says start by adding a field set. Let's go ahead and do that. Open and closing. And then I'm going to come back here to the center and let's go ahead and add the legend. Legend, L-E-G-E-N-D. And then I'm going to close that off as well. And then I need to put this text 
in there. And let me paste that. And there we go. That's what I envisioned when we were talking about it. Let's go ahead and check our code. There we go. Let's move on to our next step. Step number 19, it says, if you want the users to select one option from the option list, you can use a set of radio buttons. And here's an example of two radio buttons. Now, part of me doesn't like that they give you this example here, but then they expect something else as far as the instructions go. Let's digest this first is, hey, there's an input field and we gave it a type of radio. And that's what's going to make the little button dot, right? And it's also having a yes on here and the label here corresponds to the ID. So we're doing an association with input and then the label, input and then the label. And one of the things that they're doing on this one is they want the label to go first and then they want your radio button. So that's why it's a little bit confusing on this one here is they give you an example code of what it looks like but then they flip it on you for what they're wanting here. Coming down to my line number 36. So it says below the legend element, let's go ahead and add a label. So we're going to do label. And in here, it says that we want the four and we want to set that to the yes option. Okay. And then inside the label, it wants the word yes. Okay. So there it is. And then Following this, it wants an input field and it wants it to be the type of radio. Okay, let me go ahead and close that off there. So now we see the little dot and then the last part on here, or I guess we had a couple of things to do, is the ID. We want to set that to the yes option. Okay, so there's that association, the four here and then the ID. Okay, that's how we're associating this. And then next, what we want to do is we want to apply the name attribute. And again, this is just for the form data and we want that to be hotel stay. Okay. All right. So I believe that this is what it is wanting. We having the label on the left-hand side and then the dot. And I think that's what they want just based off of this right here, where it's the label first and then the dot. So let's go ahead and check our code. And we got the congratulations. Let's move on to this last step for this video. Step number 20, it says below the first radio button, let's go ahead and add another label. Okay, so we've done this before. So let's do a label and close it off. And on here, it says it wants it to, to say the word no in between here. And then as far as the four attribute, we want to set that to no option. So now we see the yes, we see the no, and now we need to get the input for this. And we want to close this off, first of all, and we want the type to be radio. And then the ID, we want to set that to the no option. Okay. Now, I do want to demonstrate this here is that as of right now, I can click on each one of these, but now they're both filled in, right? What makes this to be only one can be selected? It's this last part here, which is the name attribute. Once we put the hotel stay on here, now this is single click, single option to select only because they share the same name attribute. So that's just something that I wanted to demonstrate to you on this step number 20. So let's go ahead and check our code. There we go. And we got the congratulations. All right. So we made it through another 10 steps. Congratulations. Keep on going. Like I said, I'm hoping that you guys are learning something from these videos that we're making because it can really make a difference if you can take a little bit of what you've learned from Free Code Camp and then going through these videos and applying them and just going through the repetition, you're just gonna get better and better, all right? So keep on watching. Thank you for, again for subscribing and liking this video. We'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.